Good evening. I'd like to convene the regular scheduled select board meeting of uh, June 19th for the town of Berlin. Uh, with us tonight, to my left is Flo Smith. To my right is Tor Nelson. I'm Brad Town. With us also is Vince Connie, our town administrator. Um, addition or changes to the agenda? Uh, no. Uh, public comment? Hearing none, uh, special event permit application. Yeah. And there's a copy of it in your package and we'll, along with the uh, certificate of insurance. It's uh, Central Vermont Runners Club again. Same gentleman, Mr. Emmons, uh, submitted the permit. Uh, it's basically the, the same as last year's and the year before as well. Um, 4.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, <coughs> on the uh, 17th of uh, August. Make the motion to approve the special event amusement permit application for the Central Vermont Runners as presented this evening and described by Vince. Second. Any further discussion? Um, are they having? Uh, are they posting the, the route or anything? Yeah, they'll, they'll they'll have signs up along the way and they'll have volunteers. Uh, again, same as uh, they've done it in the past. As long as years. now, are they posting it before the race? You know, a day or two before? Uh, they last year they did, yeah. Yeah. Five days in advance, they said on the application. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, AOT discussion on maintenance agreement on Toll Bridge. Yes, we have uh, Adam Drew with us Drew. tonight um, to, to answer any questions or concerns uh, the, uh, the board may have. And you do have an example of what was provided for the town of Guilford in your package. Yep. Um, unfortunately, uh, I tried to respond to there again, but they still haven't been able to find the areas. I think one of the one of the problems we were having was our maintenance on a state structure. Okay. Well, I guess. Sorry, guys. I, I won't. I won't cut you off. But um, I mean, I, I've got two problems with this. Um, and the first is kind of more broad. I mean, I, I'm just fundamentally opposed to putting it upon the towns to do the maintenance on, you know, state structures, uh, like the chair alluded to. Um, it's, you know, it's in the VTRANS strategic plan and their pedestrian plan and all these action plans they have that they're going to encourage multi multimodalism and pedestrian access. And then, you know, here you're, you're taking the first good step by, you know, offering to put in the, the sidewalk, but then you're washing your hands of that. Um, I, I don't think that's fair on the part of VTRANS to do. And I understand that's a decision higher up than yours. Um, and, and I'm totally aware of that. Um, and then as far as, I mean, I'm assuming that our agreement would be somewhat close to this one provided by um, Guilford. Um, two things that concerned me in here. Um, was that uh, I guess first part on the page one of the whereas the municipality shall be responsible for the maintenance of the sidewalk improvements. Um, so that, does that mean that we're on the hook for any future repairs that need to be made to the sidewalk in the future? I'd have to check into that, but I don't think so. Okay. That's good news. And then the, the other thing that really gets me is you know, it just says including but not limited removal of ice and snow. And to me, that's just entirely vague. I mean, what, what are the standards you're looking for from us? Uh, you know, you know, a two inch snowfall, four inch. Um, you know, we go out, yet the uh, state plow goes by, you know, 10 minutes later and covers the sidewalk up again. Then we have to go out again and, and clear it off. I mean, I'd like to see something more concrete than, than just this, um, you know, the statement, you know, removal of snow and ice. The 
look into that. Um, I'm just going to concern about obviously a longer duration storm where the clouds may come through multiple times and pile snow on. Um, I'm going to be concerned if you go out for your work and then there's more that's done. Um, so I can look into that. But generally, uh, the intent would be for all the snow to be removed so nobody can unpack the base. And if it does, then something. Okay. Appreciate it. The other thing is, is that we're not, uh, we're not set up with any equipment to do that. I mean, you know, we are just, uh, we are just um, snow removal with trucks. We have nothing as far as, uh, you know, skid steers or small tractors or anything like that. And to have maintenance thrown onto us for this bridge is going to require other equipment that we just don't have. Or contracting it out. Yeah. But, but either way, it brings, puts a cost up on us as the town, um, you know, that you don't do for other municipalities as far as roadways. I mean, it might be right. time to start thinking of like a class one sidewalk program so, or some equivalent type of thing. Yeah. Um, so I can't speak to that because it's obviously more of a programmatic thing. Um, but I guess some part of our understanding of the town's not really having the capabilities to perform this maintenance um, was part of the reason why the initial proposal was to go with the foot shoulder because that does provide for uh, pedestrian access across the bridge without the need for the sidewalk. sidewalk approach just based on the feedback that we got at the meeting back in March um, from the citizens as well as the select board about cons safety concerns. Um, so that's really the reason we're going with the sidewalk. Um, so from the state's perspective, we're putting the sidewalk on at the town's request. Um, so th that's the, the maintenance that's being put on the town. <coughs> But the, the structure you're taking down already has a sidewalk. Agreed, but it's one that we don't maintain. What's the configuration of the bridge? Uh, Is it the a complete proposed, open deck with a sidewalk? The proposed one? Yeah. Yes. Open deck, so four foot shoulder, 11 foot lane, 11 foot lane, four foot shoulder, and then five foot six sidewalk. So it's. So the initial proposal was five foot shoulder, 11 foot lane, 11 foot lane, five foot shoulder. And the intent of the five foot shoulder to accommodate bicycle and pedestrian traffic. So but there I'm were, just saying there's no other sidewalk down there. The people that bike and walk the side of Route 12 on a daily basis, like, is it? worth the longevity of the town to have them put in the sidewalk or leave a wider shoulder. <laughs> five feet shoulder, five foot shoulder is more than what most people get on the, yeah. on the side of a regular highway that they bike and walk. Constantly. Well, I mean, the, the nice thing about the, I wouldn't say the nice thing about the bridge there, but the good thing about the bridge is that the sidewalk now is separate from the travel yeah. lane. That's why I, I, I haven't seen like what it was going to look like. I had an idea that it was going to be an open deck mm -hmm. with a raised sidewalk. With a raised sidewalk, but I mean, there's still there's nothing there to protect pedestrians, even on the sidewalk. If a car was to lose control on the bridge, the curtain's not going to stop the car from jumping the sidewalk and hitting <laughs> somebody on the bridge. So there's no separate. Yeah. So somebody could be on the sidewalk and the car could come down that corner. You live there a long time. That corner is very problematic in the wintertime. That's true. So basically the bridge the bridge layout is going to be the same as Bailey Street Bridge in Montpelier, except only one sidewalk. Or one I, raised sidewalk. I can't speak to that because I don't know the exact configuration of that bridge. One there by You're the high school. Yeah, the one that goes over by the Montpelier High School. 
Which is uh, which is what it is. It's open deck with uh, shoulder two, cut sidewalk. Two and a half lane, big three because one's a turn lane and that's a sidewalk on the high school side of the bridge. Mm -hmm. I personally am more in favor of the five foot shoulder as opposed to the raised um, sidewalk. That's just my own perspective. Um, but I do understand yeah. your concerns with the language there because it really opens up and puts a lot of onus on the town. It, just, a, just a question, is, is the option still available if, they, if the board chooses not to go with the sidewalk? Still, we're still in year plans right okay. now, so it's so that option is still available should the board choose that, and that eliminates having to have any agreement at all. We would have to, I don't know, the formal process, but we do need to modify the management approval and scope, if you will. Yeah, um, but we can do that. Okay, I just wanted to put that out there just in case the board. Mm -hmm. So, hearing that. I guess I would move to recommend uh, to the agency of transportation that they proceed with the five foot shoulder. shoulder, five foot mm -hmm. shoulder, as opposed to a dedicated sidewalk. I concur. Because it, I mean, to send to send a truck down there with a man just to shovel a sidewalk, it's not efficient for us. I think it's an amicable resolve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, motion on that. I moved. Second. Second. All those, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So if you can go back to AOT and just see if they can revise the plan for no side, no raised sidewalk, put it that way. And just the, the two five foot shoulders. Yeah. And if you need anything from the board, obviously just communicate with me and we'll work, we'll work through it with the board. What's needed if we have to have another meeting or anything like that, I'll just work with you on the same. We won't be in contact. Yeah. Thank you very much, Adam. Yeah, thank you, Adam. Yeah. Thank you for coming in. <clears throat> Stray Animal Holding Agreement. Uh, yep, this is the yearly. Um, Agreement looks very similar to the last year's, uh, and at the end of that, you'll see last year's invoice of five hundred and ten dollars in total um, that we have with the Humane Society. Which one hundred and ten of that is for a camp? No reaction, Mr. Chair. Well, more than any of the dogs were. Well, I have to ask this. What was the difficulty with the cat? The cat cost less, but there was the after hours. After used. hours. The cat was after hours. It was a late night cat. Well, I just want to know what the cat was doing to to elect the, uh, the ire of the, <laughs> the ire of the uh, of the animal control officer. Um, it was wandering aimlessly about um, Cedar Drive. No identification of any ownership of where it might belong. So it was picked up after hours and dropped off. And hmm. <laughs> Are you looking for adoption of this piece? Or approval? Yes, approval. Or I move that we approve the stray animal holding agreement with the Central Vermont Humane Society and authorize the town administrator to sign on our behalf. I second that motion. Any further discussion? The only discussion I have is in section F. Has section F changed in any way, Vince? I would have to look because there is a portion in there that says the town city agrees to pay CVHS a fine of $500 per animal within 30 days of the animal's arrival, in addition to the agreement fee listed below, regar regardless of how long the animal remains at CVHS. And of course that isn't in the invoice that we received this year, 
So I'm wondering what would constitute that, because that's a sizable amount. Yeah, again, I don't, I would have to get back to you on that, but I don't believe that this has changed at all since, or the fee rates. Um, the good news is last year, we didn't have anybody stay over 30 days. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that this is more of a um, quarantine, rabies quarantine type of uh, yeah, it, issue. It, it specifically just... talks about it doesn't, mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. doesn't take them for rabies quarantine, but if, mm -hmm. if, if for some reason it ends up going that way, there, there's a, a fine for that. But we, Very good. We typically use uh, uh, something rescue service for those other issues. Okay. Very good. Well, and the, in that same section, the first line, it says uh, domestic non-feral and who decides non-feral? question. And they stay in contact with you when they it, It's have typically a... the police. Okay, so deal, right deal through the police, okay. Routine basis. Okay. Um, Thank you. Any other discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. MOU for Capital Fire Mutual Aid. Yes, uh, Joe, uh, Mr. Staub brought this up and asked for it to be on the agenda and uh, conveniently he's not able to be here to talk to it tonight. This is something that we had on uh, oh boy, more than a couple of months ago. And this is a about the capital fire mutual aid and we we did approve the uh one-time payment of the funds previous to this uh coming back on the agenda for the for the 10 years and that's that's what this is we never gotcha. never completed it um, but we did approve the funding okay uh, motion for the memorandum of understanding. I make the motion to approve the memorandum of understanding as presented to us this evening and described by Vince. Oh, second. Any further discussion? Um, I wasn't part of the board for this you know, original discussion, but why, and I don't know if you can answer this, or the flow, why is this coming to us for approval I would think the fire department themselves could approve it. I think they brought it to the board mainly because they wanted our input because they were more volunteer as opposed to be combined with the town. So I think they felt uh, more inclined to have our opinion on it. Would you say that's true? That, that's Vince? part of it, but also the, the fire department did approve it, but they came to us um, as they're going, as other mutual aid fire departments are going to, to their towns for the funding mm -hmm. for this mutual aid Good um, point. Uh, system um, that they're, they're upgrading and putting in place. It's a 10 year funding plan. I can send you the information on that if you'd like to see that after to understand it better. Um, and, and the board, the board, based on the presentation that, that they were provided uh, by Mute, the Capital Fire, um, the board approved that the amount for the for the ten year funding, they approved to, to pay it in a one time payment um, out of the uh, out of the ARPA funds as well. And it was an in person presentation here to us as a board. Uh, the only other comment I would make is again, I would, if you want me to sign it as the previous one, you can authorize me or the board chair can sign it. Tim, did you have something you wanted to add? I was just gonna say, like with our department, mm -hmm. Northfield, that's the same thing we're doing. We're, we're going to the board to speak to behalf of the capital, plus the capital dispatch now, and then they're just, it's mainly for radio upgrades yep. to better. System we're having a lot of radio problems throughout the 26 towns that yeah. they cover. Now, are you trying to get all the radios the same? 
they all are the same, but it's very dated. Yeah. So they're trying to upgrade everything into like digital stuff, and we get a lot of feedback <laughs> over camp from Canada because they really don't have any restrictions up there. So their radios are a lot more powerful. They'll reach down here, no problem. So they're trying to clean all that up and get it get done more or less on their own towers and systems and. You know, I mean, they've got, I think they're up to like five towers now, but they all need upgrading. And the, I think the biggest part of it is, is the, the console in Montpelier is, I think they said like 25 years old, 20 years old, which is in radio life. That's ancient. 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 Mm -hmm. So that's mainly where all that stuff's going is, is just the, I mean, there's 26 towns, so I also, I, I'm pretty sure I have a hard copy of the presentation somewhere on file from the from the meeting, and I'll I'll resend that to the board that's just excellent. to have the information to refresh. That's great. Refresh what it was was given. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it does show the other towns and the cost and how we compare and, and such as well in that. Mm -hmm. I just don't want us to be seen as us trying to micromanage the fire department. Like that. Right. They're the ones that brought it. So they did they bring it. it mm -hmm. And it was Joseph Allsworth that did the presentation. Good guy. Very much so. Any other discussion on this? All those uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do I sign on behalf or is the board going to sign? Oh, you can sign. <laughs> okay. I was going to have you sign. <laughs> Uh, but you get away with everything. <coughs> all, all those uh, in favor? Uh, okay, so we're all set there. Okay. Um, municipal ticketing. Yes, so that's something that's been kicked around for a while that we've talked about. Um, I, I dug into it a little deeper. I've done a little research, and I've got a big stack in there if anybody cares to read it about the whole process with the state and how it works. Um, the questions that came up in the past were, you know, do we have tickets? Is it in our zoning? Um, and nobody knew the answers to those. So again, I dug into it. It is in our zoning and we do have tickets and the tickets belong to the police. They've changed the ticketing system. It's, it's a multi-use ticket that they have. Um, and, and the people that fill it out have to be authorized to do that for the, for the civil stuff in here. Um, and they are. So if we wanted to start tomorrow, basically, um, issuing municipal tickets, we meet all the requirements to be able to do that. Um, what we don't meet is the knowledge, to be quite honest. Um, what, for me, the next steps, if the board wants to move in this direction, would be to get Tom, the zoning administrator, and the chief to sit down and talk about uh, the process of how we're going to manage this because we just can't send a police officer out to write up a junkyard yet. He doesn't know the requirements and stuff. So how do we how do we get that information to them in the proper manner to have them be able to do that, right? Um, that's that's the question. It's good because yes, we do have the tickets. This is in your package, and we do have you know all the requirements in the in the zoning um, that they're referred to as well. And again, this is just. The law, as it says in a nutshell, on, on how it needs to be done, and, and we can do that. Um, the, the fees are even in the uh, enforcement procedure in our zoning regulations as well. The fees are there. Um, so, uh, really, for what we're looking for, what I'm looking for from the board tonight is do we want to proceed to put this in place? Should I sit with the chief, talk to him about it, talk with him and Tom about it to come up with? how we're gonna apply this, right? It's gonna be more work for the police as well. Or the other option to that is we can, we can appoint the board, being the we, being the board, can appoint um, someone else to also be authorized to do this and we have to register over the state just like the police have to register to do those, tic do those tickets. So that is an option that is out there. Um, uh, either way that we go, uh, we still need to, train somebody right so if if we're going to have somebody else do the tickets for example tom zoning yeah. officer we're going to have him do the tickets 
he's got to learn from the police. There's going to be some cross training there on how to do the tickets because he'll have the zoning information. If we go with the police, they're going to have to do some cross training with Tom to understand the zoning regulations and how to fill out the tickets for that as well. Boy, this form looks very familiar. I think I have one of these in my truck right now. But uh, <laughs> no. that's beside the point, um, has Tom been approached about this, what his feelings are? That's Tom, exactly Tom, my question in both Tom, regards. Yeah, Tom has been approached about municipal tickets. He thinks it's time for us to move forward, but he doesn't want to write them. <laughs> okay. Um, I seem to remember, I was off the board at the time, but when Chief Wolf was still around, that he approached the board about this very issue. Um, do you remember, Mr. Chair, why that wasn't my pursued further? I don't mean to butt in, but my understanding at the time was that may have been before the regulations, zoning regulations were updated, because they were updated, I think, in 2022, 2019 and amended by the board in 22. And they didn't, no. all the requirements were not met to be able to do that prior to this revision, this last revision of the zoning regulations. I'm in favor of I, this, but I would recommend that the police mm -hmm. issue the tickets with the training and the knowledge or the cross-reference with Tom. Yeah, that's how need. I remember the discussion was with Chief Wolf that um, the police department would issue the, you know, the, the ticket and if it went to a hearing, you know, they would call the zoning administrator as mm -hmm. a witness. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's probably the way to go. Mm -hmm. And I will make that motion. I think that's the conducive way to go about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. cool. uh, what was the motion? I don't know, um, that we proceed with the uh, utilization of the VCVC uh, form for zoning violations um, issued by the police department um, utilizing the Expertise of the zoning administrator. When you want to be taken in the in your in your uh, motion there, when you want to take and have it for all of municipal infractions. Well, that sounds even better, Mr. Chair. <laughs> and I second that on the municipal ticketing decision. I I can't, I can't make a motion. <laughs> Somebody else has to. I moved it. Okay. <laughs> So moved. Second. Okay. Any other discussion on this? The only thing I would say about this is um, Vince and I have talked some and uh, about hiring a um, jack of all trades, do the lawn mowing, maintenance, and I'm wondering if we can get enough work together to hire another employee to take this off of the police department. It'll be something they'll have to look into. We can't do it anytime soon. But. Well, I guess my question is how much um, activity do you expect from this? I mean, right now, there's probably, there's at least three um, areas that could be inspected and looked into right now that we at least three that we know. But see, my thing would be is, is that if you have somebody who can do multiple multiple things, everything from mowing lawns to uh, you know sweeping the yard or whatever, if you have them trained to be able to do this, at least then you have the possibility they'll move into the police department if there's an opening and you can hire somebody else who is, I mean, this is definitely an entry-level job at least the lawn mowing is part of it, but uh, if we can take and get somebody who would be willing to... Uh, but we also we also talked about that individual being a shared labor force between the highway and the, and the public works group. Yeah. Now, certainly in the summer, um, that person will have 
Plenty more than enough. Plenty of work to do just between public works and, and highway um, crew labor work. Uh, winter, um, obviously the public works side will probably slow down a little bit, but the, the thought was that they could shovel, um, th- shovel, oh, shovel, I was gonna say shovel a bridge. <laughs> shovel a bridge. Um, well, actually, you know, I did pass, <laughs> uh, back up on the on the plowing as well. You could, yeah. you could do the pickup plowing, you know, up to Waterworks Way and, and those type of things in the winter. Um, that was the thought behind it. I hadn't given a lot of thought into this, but I guess what I'll try to do, um, if, the, if the board wants to move forward with this, just as a backup, I'll, I'll try to get a summary of hours and what that would look like for a, another employee. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll work with Tom and the chief to figure out um, how to best apply it and not overload the police as well. I'm in right. favor I'm of the cons. Of Sorry. Go ahead. I'm in favor of the concept of another employee to do the yard work, the mowing, cleaning, errands, that type of work. But I'm more inclined for the uh, municipal ticketing to be through the police department. I think it should be separate of that. But I think the position and the concept is a good one for all of the <coughs> other yeah. other areas. I, I would be more concerned about the additional workload on the zoning administrator as it would be up to him to gather and, and document all the evidence and be prepared to present it. Um, if the officer itself will, you know, just really be just filling out this form and, yeah. and serving it. And, yeah. and some departments do it computerized. Not quite all that. But. And that brings up a good question. If the police are serving, serving the ticket, would they actually be the one that would need to go and testify as opposed to Tom? That's I, my I impression. The way it's written is that they're the ones that have to go and represent. I believe so too. Mm-hmm. But Tom would do much of the background, mm-hmm. the research, the investigative. Yeah, he'd, have, he'd have to make sure of the, the right sections of the zoning um, violation or Correct. zoning procedure were quoted. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. I'll take it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. ARPA funds update. There's a one pager in the document that Diane had prepared that we had uh, reviewed. Um, it tells you uh, the amount that's been paid to date and what's still obligated under future. Um, and then the balance down at the bottom. So based on what we spent and what we have uh, obligated, there are still $110,000 uh, in funds. And when does that have to be obligated? December of 24. That, that has to be obligated. So a year and a half from now. Yeah. Uh, and I got to double check that. Uh, I saw a notice come out the other day. It may, I don't believe it, it has to be spent by then, but it may, maybe, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's obligated, but I will double check that and make sure. Uh, well, the, only, the only thing I worry about is if we hold, if we hold the balance, I can tell you there's one item missing on the list um, that Diane did not. Oh, no, she's got it. There it is down at the bottom. Okay, so it's in there. Okay, so we're good. The only thing I worry about is if Congress, for some unknown reason, changes the rules and shortens the period. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we'll be okay. And along those lines, what is the date obligated by December 2024? What is the date for spending the funds? Uh, it has to be spent, I believe, by the end of the following year. So by the end of 2025? 2025. Yeah, I'll have to double check that again, just to, just to make sure I don't miss, speak on that. Um, the, the other thing, just to throw out there, we're talking about the funds and the use thereof. Um, at the next meeting, uh, there's going to be an update on the amount of grant work that, that Tom's been working on, um, and, a, and, a, and a complete list of very long list of, of projects that are accounted for dollar wise what we've gone after for grants and what what is 100 percent and what we would also have to pay 20 percent on and based on the numbers most of this could be consumed as a payment towards some of those grants our, our participation there's about and this isn't all the projects yet um if my memory is correct a little over six million dollars worth of 
Have there been no. recent approvals of grants as well? Uh, there's not approvals, but um, Close? acceptance, so acknowledgement of the applications and, and such. Great. And a lot of conversations um, going into details. Great. So Tom is trying to make a hundred and ten thousand into six million. <laughs> I like not, not really, not, not a hundred and ten, but we're trying to make some money into six million. Yes. Yes. Okay. As close as we can get, anyway, in grants. So anything else on this, Vince? No. Uh, again, it was just an update. If you if you look at that and have any questions after, just send me an email or give me a call. Thank you, Vince, and thank you to Diane, too. Okay, uh, proposal for phase one environmental study on Kuaz Trail. Right, so we've got, uh, uh, I think it's a seven acre parcel down on Kuaz Trail of town property um, that we don't know what we're going to do with yet. Um, there's potential out there. Um, like we just talked about, there's a lot, a whole long laundry list of projects and things as the town grows and develops that we're looking at. Um, that's a, a you know, decent piece of property up here. And uh, so it's it's $4,500 to do this initial uh, survey to see if there's any issues with that property. Um, so at some point down the road, should the board decide that's a great place for something, um, we're a little bit ahead of the APOC if we look forward with this. We got this done now while we still have some funds. If approved, how soon could they do it, Vince? Uh, I don't recall seeing the date that they could start. Um, I know the proposal's good for like 45 days, so I would, you know, make an assumption that it's probably, uh, probably be late fall with the way the scheduling is. At the earliest. But I could check. How does this relate to the work that the Economic Development Committee is doing? I know they're looking at overall needs, space needs for the town yep. this, moving forward. This kind of dovetails in with that because they know about the property, but we don't know if we can do anything with it or what the cost would be to do with it. This would be the first step to determining, you know, what we can do with that property. If it's going to be, if, if there's, heaven forbid, contaminated soil down there or whatever, that changes the cost of having to do something down there or what we may be able to do with that where if it comes back clean and it's good and ready to go it's a lot less costly to move forward with that so it kind of dovetails with it it's information i can feed into the economic development but to say you know we've got you know seven acres down here that's that's clean and ready to do something with as well to consider take some of the you know maybe we can maybe we can't out of it so i'm just a little bit concerned this is a uh fairly steep amount of money for an unknown, potentially. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I would move that we table this discussion for until our next meeting to let the other two uh, board members a chance to weigh in. I agree. Is there any time limit on this? I, I've got, uh, I think it's 35, 30 days. Okay. 45 days, 45 days to get it back. So. Yep. Okay, uh, all those in favor of tabling? Aye. Aye. Okay, table that. Um, town encampment policy. So I, I sent this out to you. I, uh, I made the changes that were recommended and that we had talked about, sent it back out. I don't know if you've had a chance to look at it um, again or not. Mm -hmm. I, I have. If there's any more comments, if you like it as is, if there's uh, more things that we have to, to figure out or have questions on, uh, including the uh, Chad's comments are incorporated in this provision as well. Um, but I don't have any uh, feedback from him on this this revision yet either. But I can check with him as well. Um. Do we have an ident identified properties right now that would need to be cleaned up? Yes. 
How many? Do you know? Two that I two that I know two? of. Okay. There, um, may, there may be more. And again, I can I can find out from the police. There may be more, but I, I, I well, there's actually probably more, but some of them are in use now again as well. But there's two that I know of that are, are probably not in use. Okay, so this is um, something we need to get on fairly sooner soon than later. Um, has there been any word from the police department um, with the changes to the motel program? Any uh, additional? The, um, there's been some, but not as high as expected. Okay. Which is good. At least that we know of, yeah see what they've seen okay i know one business had somebody sleeping on their property friday night along 302 mm -hmm. stuff. so i don't know if that's related to it or not but I'm still concerned with this section of removing the encampment and bringing it back to the town office building to be stored for 30 days. I understand the importance of giving individuals time to um, pick up their items if they so wish, but I'm concerned about spacing and ability to store that here at the town office and I'm open to discussion about that further. Yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement. I don't like the idea of us getting into the storage business, business, the storage business. I'm just concerned about. Yeah. I, there are constitutional protections about government taking personal property, and I, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, it, yeah. and this is potentially everything that these people own. Um, yeah. I'm, I just, I'm leery about that. I, I, I don't want us to do it, but yet I'm not. I'm leery that we had actually have the authority to do that, mm -hmm. to, to dispose of it immediately. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, yeah, that's, we don't have the facilities of some of the bigger towns around us do that, you know, this, this came from. So, you know, the, I think personally the best, <coughs> best we could do for storage is probably one of the containers that we have sitting out there. We could put it in a container. Um, it's probably the best we could offer. If we if we go that route, I also note the verbiage on page twelve or thirteen says disposal may also include donation of the items. Right. And I would just question, you know, all of that particular portion, if that meets with um, proper legality. Well, well, and that one in particular, though, um, if you if you back up to page eleven, that that is at that point it's determined unclaimed property because the town's held it for thirty for thirty days. days. So then it becomes unclaimed. Mm -hmm. um. I do like five, five section five part B, um, giving authority to the police chief, fire chief, or town health officer, may order the immediate disposal of any item removed that is illegal or represents a risk to public safety. I think that that is a good inclusion in the policy. Do you have a copy of this Washington County Survival Guide? Do you have electronic? Mm -hmm. uh, I have a hard copy, and I also have provided uh, 10 laminated copies to the police okay. of that. So we have it in hand, and we have the ability to laminate more as needed now. How thick, how big is it? It's a, a it's a eight and a half by eleven double sided. I wouldn't mind having a copy of just so. Yeah, I've got one on my desk. Just here. to uh, make myself aware of it. Yep. Just, um, just remind me before you leave. I'll hand you. A okay. Have cool. a copy for you tonight. I also didn't see it in the policy, but if we are going to bring it here and store it for the thirty days, <coughs> it might be wise to have some type of an accounting of what the items are. Et cetera. Well, there'll and have to be a log of where exactly. it came from and, and, mm -hmm. and what's there and, mm -hmm. and so on for sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that was one of my comments, wasn't it? Was yeah. For the police department, does it need to be an inventory? Yeah. I, you know, I, I think the initial thought was putting it in their evidence room, but that's 
that's a non-starter for them. They, oh, when sure. they don't have the room at two, that's not a place for it to be. Right. Mm -hmm. the room, so. Do you have any idea or have you heard of it, any bit, anybody saying what the item would be? I'm just wondering about uh, if there'd be any perishables. Uh, Again, I don't, uh, I, I'm not even sure we see a case, we've seen a case where we would be doing this at this point, right? Yeah. Most of the time, the police have a, a pretty good relationship with these people. They ask them to move on, they grab their stuff and they move on. Uh, what we do see is when, when they leave an encampment, it's always just the trash that's left behind, right? The, the torn tarps, the needles, you know, the, just the nasty stuff that's left behind that needs to be cleaned up. Um, I don't think I've ever discussed anything with the, with the police yet of any abandoned property that's of any value. The tents, the sleeping bags and those type of things, you know, the, the lanterns, the, the propane stuff, that all goes away with them. They, they find a way to get it and move it. There may be at some point, who knows, but uh, I'm not aware of, of a situation like that yet where they would want to take the stuff. And we're looking at hiring contractors to do the physical cleanup? Well, that's what we talked about at the, <clears throat> at the, at the last meeting, right? But potentially that would be, you know, somebody that's familiar with has, hazardous material cleanup have to be or you know if, if the town's going to do it should we get it for a lucky employee he's going to have to be trained in how to handle hazmat material because you know every site that they've told me about has needles and and nasty stuff Blood, bloodborne pathogen yeah. training yeah. yeah my question along those lines is if it got to that point as opposed to hiring a contractor in, in that respect if it got to that point as described just now, could we or would we reach out for assistance from the state and hazard to, in their hazardous expertise? Even though we realize that it's our town and our responsibility in the, in the ultimate, My they have the expertise. Personal feeling on that from previous conversations the state early on regarding this unless it's on state property not a chance okay. and I think it would be at best limited to consultation mm -hmm. and advice mm -hmm. only mm -hmm. um, not actual I think that would be very on. beneficial mm -hmm. because of the expertise that they have um, it might be it might be worthwhile to have that conversation again to see what could be done if anything. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Anything else on this? And, and I'm not even, I haven't even begun to explore a contractor yet to see if there's even anybody out there um, that's willing and or willing to be qualified. I'd be inclined more down the road um, for that if it was needed um, to go forward with whatever we determine is necessary. As far as a, a necessity for cleanup, there's one right now that we've had several calls on, which is down off the Dock River Road. Um, on the on the corner as you're headed from Montpelier to Route 12, right <coughs> that corner is right mm -hmm. inside, right mm -hmm. on the edge of the town property and the private property border. Right, right I know there, which one. Mm -hmm. There is a, um, there is an old encampment there that uh, there's been calls and complaints about the number of needles and things from a couple of fishermen and mm -hmm. uh, somebody taking their dog down there and such that uh, of concern. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything else on this before we move on to the next one? Okay. Um, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. 
I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 23-26 for payroll from June 4th to June 17th, 2023, paid on June 21st of this year in the amount of $65,978.25. Payable warrant 23G23 with checks 23045 to 23082 for payables in the amount of $182,000. $953.98. Second. Any discussion on this? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, approval of June 5th, 2023 minutes. I haven't had a chance to read them in their entirety. Have you, Tour? Uh, I did. I don't have any problems with them. Okay, excellent. I move to approve the June 5th, 2023 minutes as uh, presented. Excellent. And I'll go ahead and second those. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, round table floor? Nothing this evening. Thank you. Tor? Uh, nothing, sir. <coughs> Vince? I don't have anything this evening, Mr. Chair. Uh, any executive session expected? No, sir. Motion to adjourn. I make so, the motion to adjourn tonight's regularly scheduled select board meeting. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>